for me. I beg your pardon? Take it. Parisi, kill me. Show me that you have the courage to do it in a decent, honorable way. Not in the cowardly, scrawly, humiliating ways that you planned. No, this is the first time in my life that I feel I need a touch of alcohol. Apollo, be a dear. The bottles are over there. What do you think I ought to have? Super whiskey? Anything. I don't know. I don't think there is any. Thank you. Please, do help yourself. You look done in. Not quite yet. You've read it? As much as I need. No, Monsieur Parker. I think it's time for the confession. Where to begin? It's quite true that when I wrote Curtain, I fully intended it for immediate publication. Apart from everything else, you were simply getting too old. You see, I made a dreadful mistake. I made you too old right at the beginning at style. That was, let me see, 1920. And after that, I had to make you a bit older with each book. You know, readers put these things. Anyway, by 1940, you'd had a good run for your money. You were pushing 80. That's too old, isn't it? For a detective. To be effective. Please proceed. Well, that's it, really. Yeah. At the beginning, you said apart from everything else, I was too old. I should like to know what you meant by everything else. Well, you were beginning to get in the way. A bit. Get me the way. There. Yeah, a bit. You see, I liked writing lots of different sorts of things. I mean, I liked my Miss Marple books. I liked writing other murder stories without being, well, being tied. But they kept insisting. Agatha, we've got to have a new Poirot book. Can't you put Poirot in this, Poirot in that? Oh, I just obeyed orders. It spoiled things, you see. I mean, sad Cyprus. They forced me to put you in that. Completely ruined. Didn't need you much better without you. But no. Got to have Poirot in it. Nobody will mind so long as it's Poirot. Well, I minded. Anyway, there you are. realized quite how jealous you were. Don't be ridiculous. No, I don't. Do not attempt to deny it, my dear Agatha. Now that I have read this uh, thing, nothing could be more clear. If it had been merely a question of, uh, how shall I say, uh, logic, convenience to kill me off, there would have been no need for all the humiliation. Humiliation? But come, my dear. All those references, more and more of them, to Monsieur Poirot's peculiar, no, pardon, little Monsieur Poirot's peculiar egg-shaped head, and then the closet. <laughs> First of all, the spiked spats, then the two tight button leather shoes, the striped trousers. I mean, whom? 
Whom do you know that dresses like this? Whom? I came to look like some sort of narcissistic penguin. You're also amused when you wrote me out of those two films, Murder Most Foul and Murder at the Gallop, two of my cases. Wasn't my fault. Oh, no, of course not. And of course, it would not have been your fault. But I just happened to be replaced in those two films by that ridiculous Miss Marple woman. You're a person with whom I cannot for one minute begin to understand. Untrained, senile, spinster. But let us leave that to one side. All, all this one might understand. It was hurtful, it was cruel, it was humiliating, but knowing the extent of your jealousy, one might understand, one might perhaps even forgive. But this, twisted, crippled in a wheelchair, put to bed, hair washed and dried, <laughs> and the hair tied. It's a wig. Oh. It turns out to be a wig, later on, in the bit you haven't read. Where is it? Where is the rest of it? Somewhere where you can't get it. I insist on seeing it. You can insist as much as you jolly well like. I'm not going to show it to you. to die. Surely that is my right. Despite it all, you will, I know, have given me a proper death, Miss Byrne. A death worthy of both of us, yes? A murder? Monsieur, a murder! Of course it would have to be a murder. But for Achille Poirot, the murder of the most exotic sort. Naturellement, the most brilliant murder that you have ever devised in any of your books. Am I right? Am I not, Agatha? And of course, it was no ordinary murder would succeed on such a distinguished victim, uh, no ordinary murderer. I did not reason, sir. Whoever would be so clever as to outwit the great Hercule Poirot? You would not go for the clumsy shooting or the stabbing. So, whoever it is, would have to use the little brain cells as cleverly, more cleverly, than myself, if that was possible. <laughs> Agatha, you will tell me. <laughs> what? Agatha, I don't understand. <laughs> My dear Poirot, you don't get murdered at all. <laughs> huh? You... You simply have a heart attack. Agatha. 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 Agatha, are you all right, my dear? Well, what time is it? It's seven o'clock in the morning. When Edmund and I came to find you last night, you were fast asleep. You looked so comfy, I thought I'd just cover you and leave you. Oh, what 
a lovely day. What's old Edge come up to? Sorry, my dear. Ah, move. Ah. I say, are you really all right, Agatha? Quite all right. You know, Max, I think I've got rather a good idea.